Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of High Performance 2023, covering everything HPC, machine learning, AI, high performance analytics, and quantum computing, part of ISC 2023 CUBE coverage. Today's topic is cloud for HPC. We've got two great guests, Sherry Samak with Dell and Andrew Lee with Rescale Partner, Silicon Valley startup, hot startup. Sherry and Andrew, thanks for joining the program. Thanks Thank for you for having me. us. You know, I love HPC, I love the cloud, how it's brought that to the forefront in all applications. High performance is st table stakes now, certainly with cloud scale, but now you got machine learning, you got a lot of other things going on, more emphasis on silicon, chips, uh, all this action coming in and cloud driving it. I want to get your take on it. We'll start with you, Shervin, the cloud scale HPC, what's it all about? What are the key issues right now that's given this market a boost? Uh, so yeah, uh, one of the most important issue in HPC after actually pandemic, what happened is the complexity of HPC. So what the value of the cloud here is it provides the flexibility. So for the customers that's uh, having issues uh, uh, putting their new data center, they have issues with the real estate, either it's going to be uh, the cooling issue or power issue and uh, also uh, just buying the infrastructure. Uh, we are saying the uh, cloud provides much more value here. You can start with, with very small and then scale it uh, as your business is scale. So uh, that's pretty much it. Awesome, I got some questions for you. Sure, I'm going to come back to you. Andrew Lee, Rescale is the company, Silicon Valley startup growing, partnering with Dell here. Take a minute to explain what Rescale does, but we'll get into some of the questions. Yeah, so Rescale, we specialize in HPC built for the cloud. Um, uh, with the advent of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, uh, especially with ChatGPT, uh, more and more users are doing machine learning uh, to do uh, training in neural nets, uh, which actually utilizes a lot of frameworks that high performance computing allows. Um, Rescale here makes uh, uh, HPC for the cloud uh, very simple uh, for scientific uh, users and engineers uh, to get on cloud resources and basically be virtually unblocked using a multi uh, cloud infrastructure. You know, the interesting thing is, is I want to get your thoughts as we talk about the cloud, you got the hyperscalers, for instance, what's the, you know, what's, what's going on with the hyperscales? How, how does your cloud for HPC offering differ from the competition? Yeah, so our offering, um, we do have some partnerships as well with all the uh, hyperscalers as well, but what's unique is that it's multi-cloud um, along with utilizing uh, various Dell infrastructure uh, and that allows scientific and engineering users uh, to utilize the most optimal infrastructure of their choice. You never want to actually uh, be locked into any particular vendor um, because your scientific engineer workloads could be very specialized. And a lot of times, uh, especially with the explosion of architectures, you know, GPUs, CPUs, FPGAs, uh, different types of vendors and processors, um, it makes it uh, the flexibility and choice that much more important. Yeah, with super computing, you got super cloud, which we call multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, but it's not really hyperscale. And then super apps, AI and Fuse, you're seeing AI enabled driving a lot of that. So a nice super layer kind of a, a stack emerging. Um, but I have to ask you, because you're seeing in all the, the pressure points for these apps that are taking advantage of the AI, they're putting more pressure on the hardware, right? That, you, know, got, you got GPUs you mentioned yeah, and other, other silicon. What do you guys see as the barriers at this point to harnessing an HPC cloud for researchers and then the enterprise? So the HPC stack is very interesting. Um, you have tons of different types of uh, software and ecosystems. So for example, on our platform today, we have over a thousand uh, ISVs. Um, you know, you can uh, open source like OpenFoam, GrowMax, PyTorch, right? And you also have commercial workloads like Ansys and Siemens. Uh, and then custom codes, right, uh, for various use cases. Uh, combine that with different types of, uh, you know, schedulers, compilers, libraries, and then on top of that, different architectures from, you know, AMD to NVIDIA and all the different type of architectures that they provide ARM. Uh, all of those combinations, we basically estimate that that could be, you know, 50,000 plus combinations that you can use to optimize your stack. So what Rescale does is that we actually make it all very simple in partnership with Dell. Um, to have all of that pre-configured and pre-tuned. Uh, and that way we actually have an AI powered uh, recommendation engine. Uh, so that way we can recommend the best optimal stack for the users. Sherwin, sure, weigh in here on the Dell side. What, what are you enabling? What's the key to the partnership here? 
Um, so for us, is uh, we already have, uh, so Dell is an infrastructure company. We sell uh, HPC server for uh, people that have data center. Uh, but uh, the most important thing here is how to make it uh, seamless for our customers to shift to the cloud. If they wanted to take advantage of uh, the flexibility of cloud, so they already have some on-prem system and how it, uh, we can make it easy in partnership with Rescale so they don't even see it. It's a very seamless person to the cloud and that's what uh, our customers are coming to and asking for us. Talk about the portfolio, you guys are making it even better. This adds to the portfolio, what's the impact? Um, I think the, uh, the impact to the portfolio is very uh, significant. Uh, so uh, we have talked about the infrastructure side of it. Uh, I think our servers and storage uh, portfolio uh, can address all the needs of the customer. But I think the, it just uh, the impact for this offer is mostly on the, uh, the OPEX model uh, for the customer that wanted to take advantage of it. Um, and we make sure that everything underneath is tuned and optimized for HPC, but just giving that flexibility if you don't want it to invest uh, the first, uh, if you don't want to just buy infrastructure and put it on your prem, so you can take advantage of this. So metering has been uh, important in the cloud. Um, this brings up the, the issue of the tools on HPC. Um, what kind of tools does HPC on demand offer to help customers keep track of all the metering issues and expenses and usage. Cost is huge. If you get out of control, uh, it's, it's more than leaving the lights on, as I say, it's a lot of money. <laughs> you don't watch what you're doing here. The, the cost could be pretty crazy. So uh, we have a lot of different types of uh, policy settings uh, and administration settings, basically, that users can actually utilize and deploy. Uh, so for example, we have different types of workspaces we can enable. Um, within those workspaces, we can add different users. Uh, each of those users can be allocated a specific budget. Now, they could be hard limits. So for example, like $1,000, uh, and then that's it. Um, or it can actually be a little bit more open-ended. Um, so depending on your project, your group, uh, as well as the user, uh, you can allocate that. And this is actually done globally. So you can actually have different environments where you would invite users from, say, U.S. and Canada, you know, uh, APJ or EMEA. And that way they can actually all draw down from the same budget pool um, or not, right? And all of that is actually at the control of the uh, administrators that we actually enable. Maybe it make, makes sense to explain what is HPC on demand mean? Uh, HPC on demand for us uh, basically means uh, for scientific and engineering users uh, to be able to access uh, virtually unlimited compute. Uh, what we've seen is that R&D investment is really important. Um, for every dollar of a spend, basically, uh, an enterprise company can actually uh, reap the reward of over you know, 40 or $50 of revenue in terms of the investment. Uh, so being able to unblock that uh, for scientific and engineering users for the research and development purposes yeah. certainly accelerates us. And that's how we get our, you know, the future of flying cars and automated, uh, 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 you know, driving vehicles and whatnot, right? Um, there's a lot of research out there that's very important and this will certainly unblock all of that. I think, the, I think that brings up the, the segue to the hyperscalers. I've heard people say it's difficult, complex, takes a long time to get, get it going, can be expensive. This is where HPC on demand differs from that. How do you guys compare when you look at the offerings on the hyperscales versus your unlimited compute, HP, HPC on demand? How do your performance compare? Uh -huh. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a good point. Uh, I think the value the value proposition of our offer compared to the hyperscalers um, is uh, that vendor locking. I, I think it's very important for the customers. Uh, you wanted to take advantage of uh, on CSP one. Uh, someday in uh, in some of the instances there. And the other day, uh, maybe the pricing is better on another instance and you wanted to kind of uh, use that. So kind of replicating all of these processes and workload from one uh, hyperscaler to another is going to be a very challenge uh, for our customers. But with this control plane uh, that we have for HPC on demand, uh, all of those are kind of masked from the customer. You are just interacting with one single unified control plane, that's uh, value one. Uh, the other value is 
uh, we, uh, uh, we try to make it easy for our customer. HPC is complex. Uh, if you are going to hyperscalers, you basically need to uh, tune and optimize uh, different instances. You need to configure the network, uh, firewall, all of that. And when we are comparing it, what we can provide in, with HPC on demand, uh, we brought about 25 no, uh, different number of steps to about uh, less than uh, seven or eight. That it's very easy for our customers to just uh, bring their input, uh, click on whatever the software is, uh, make sure the instances is optimized, and then uh, run their simulation. So that's uh, the second point. Yeah, and they got the flexibility there. So you think you guys are competitive with the established cloud service providers? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on top of being multi-cloud, um, so that way we can actually optimize the infrastructure, uh, we can also deploy hybrid environments. And what that allows is having the best of both worlds of what the on-prem uh, you know, cost uh, can offer, uh, as well as you know, cloud bursting use cases. Um, so essentially being able to kind of mix and match between on-prem and various multi-cloud infrastructure, uh, we can be you know, extremely competitive in terms of both performance as well as uh, cost optimized, uh, depending on what your use cases are. I think the on-prem cloud, that's a great position. That's where the demand is, um, uh, pun intended, HPC on demand seems to fit that well. The question that comes up, I'd love to get you guys to thoughts on this and weigh in is making it easy more seamless and even more intelligent because it has to come in and deliver the AI, has to deliver the goods and then connect in a cloud manner. How do you guys make that easier and seamless? So we start basically from the end users uh, in mind. Um, so as I mentioned, the scientific engineering uh, user base, right? They have different types of codes and softwares, open source commercial. So we have over a thousand software partners on our platform. Uh, and over 5,000 plus versions. So a lot of times it's a very difficult for all these enterprises to manage all their versions and all their softwares and their entire stack and optimize it for uh, the appropriate infrastructure. Um, we basically do that um, right out of the gate. And basically it's a very simple user interface where you can actually just select your software and the, uh, where you want to deploy and essentially just submit run, right? Um, and all that information uh, in terms of uh, the performance intelligence will be captured to help recommend uh, better ways to run. Cloud and HPC go well together, but cloud operations means on-prem, you brought up the edges coming around too. Andrew, what are you seeing in terms of the AI piece? Cause now the data becomes super valuable. You got the compute, the HPC on demand, um, you get the data, you got the cloud, you got on-prem, you got all the other clouds, you got edges around the corner, you know, intelligent edge. What's your, what do you see happening with the data and, and where HPC goes when you start bringing all this new uh, AI to the table? Yeah, so what we're seeing in the field is that uh, all customers want uh, us to complete the digital thread. So what we mean that, by that is basically all the data acquisition, modeling, simulation data, uh, be able to uh, model and simulate um, your products and all the way to manufacturing data and then you have edge data, all of that to be able to have a sort of a closed loop ecosystem uh, where you can actually utilize the data in the field to kind of bring it back uh, to prove your products. Um, so we're definitely working towards that. I don't want to say that we have all the answers <laughs> to be no, honest. No one does yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, nobody does yet, uh, but that's uh, what we're driving towards uh, in terms of uh, this partnership with Dell as well. Yeah, I think a lot of people are really seeing value in the data. We'll see how it all pans out as the architectures come in. And, you know, it's an architectural place. Sure, talk, talk about the Dell, you got a partner here, for the folks watching, what should they know about Dell's role in HPC in the cloud? What's the big story? Sure, uh, so uh, uh, as as you know, like Dell is a very collaborative company. We, uh, if we don't have an, any offer in, in, internally, uh, we try to partner with other people. Uh, and for this case, we really scale to kind of provide this uh, collaborative solution for our customer. So we have that customer uh, uh, first in, in our mindset, that's important. And uh, what we see here for HPC on demand is the value that uh, the VSKill is providing for our customers. All those uh, software uh, requirements that customer are asking, we wanted to have the uh, administration, we wanted to make sure our budget is in control. Uh, we wanted to see uh, all these different uh, software are installed. So that's what uh, why we think that this partnership can bring 
uh, uh, to the table. So, uh, and we are very excited about it. It brings up a really good example. We've been saying on theCUBE for many years, hardware is really software too. It's a software business running on hardware. And now hardware is back because hardware, people see the processors, they see the, the GPUs, they see the value, but it's the software game. This has always been the play. Shervin, well, how many times have you <laughs> we, you've seen, hey, we're a software company. It's hardware and software working together. This is the magic of this market right now. I think this is a great example. Just your thoughts on when people say, is it just hardware? Or talk about the software involvement, how much software is involved. Absolutely, so um, uh, you are right on point. So um, we provide the hardware and software actually. So behind the scene uh, in, in this collaborative partnership with uh, Rescale, we have done more than 50,000 number of simulation hours to just make sure that all of the software that uh, uh, are putting on the system is uh, completely optimized and tuned for that specific hardware. So a lot of engineering work, uh, has been done from our side as well as the real scale side to ensure uh, we have the best hardware uh, software for the best hardware and this cycle goes on and on. So This is a great conversation. We have to end it there. Andrew, I'll give you the last word at Rescale. What do you see uh, taking advantage of this innovation? What's next for Rescale? What are some of the things on your mind right now? So for us, uh, we are seeing explosion, right? In terms of uh, um, AI, ML, uh, research computing. Uh, so for us, uh, we merely want to ride the way, right? Uh, to be able to kind of be a piece of this action as well as just uh, help enable a, a better future for everything, uh, including all the research that's done in life science and manufacturing and technology. Uh, it's just an exciting place to be. Awesome. And uh, we want to do it with Dell, obviously. Yeah, great relationship. Congratulations, both of you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE's coverage of high performance in 2023, part of ISC 2023. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, John Furrier. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Sherman. Thank you, Andrew.